All right. Um, I already saw how many of you guys are developers, guys or girls. So I'm not gonna ask that question. How many people here have heard of, are familiar with ENS? Raise your hand. Okay, great. So I was hoping this wouldn't be too obscure. So the European Nuclear Society <laughs> was founded in 1975. Um, they had really good foresight. They, they thought that proof of stake mining was going to be. So ENS stands for Ethereum Name Service. And what, it, what, what does it do? Well, it makes that jumble of crap turn into something beautiful. Um, it makes your wallet address you can have them, like a URL for your wallet address now, so you don't have to tell people like, yeah, just you know, just send money to zero x seven eight three five two nine six four two five. You know, just send just send it to Ethereum Denver dot e. Send it to send. To <laughs> <laughs> um, who who can tell me what DNS stands for? Domain name service. Close. It's actually the Dogecoin. What inspired the Ethereum developer? That's the last trick. Yes, domain name system. So what does that do? Well, it turns this, which is an IP address, into this. So it's essentially the same thing as DNS, but for IPs. So DNS is kind of this like hybrid centralized, decentralized system, you have like root servers and things kind of trickle down, but, but for the most part it's like very centralized and in there, it, it's getting, it's, it's kind of under attack like all the time and there have been some like semi-successful DDoSes of it, but ENS, because it, it's etched into the blockchain, like the registry, you know, the, it's kind of like a phone book of whose wallet goes to what uh, human readable name, is completely distributed. Everyone who's a full node has a copy of this phone book or this registry. So it's very hard to break. Um, it's not scalable really at this point because blockchain. Uh, <laughs> uh, why is it important? Well, it's like really simple. It's just because we're humans and we're not computers. Um, we, you know, computers don't care if it's two letters or 10,000 letters and numbers that they're dealing with. Humans want something, we want a nice experience. We, we want to go to, we want to send money to the <laughs> And it helps get rid of these damn things. <laughs> Not completely, but you know, one step at a time. Uh, I know many of us have had, a lot, I mean some of us have an actual like visceral reaction to, uh, <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> but now we can feel like that. <laughs> that was a really disturbing picture. Of <laughs> uh, so, like, my wall is already implemented this. You can go there and you can type in the, the, the name, and, and it will automatically resolve to, to whatever wall it's associated with. And 13.378. Text st stacks, yo. How is it a copy of the DNS name? Uh, oh, yeah, we'll get into that. All right. Uh, good question. Uh, what are stacks? It's like it's like when rednecks go out and like compare their like they're talking about their hot rods. Developers are like, yo, dude, like, what kind of stack you run, bro? <laughs> it's, it's like I run, you know, like in web 1.0 days. Like, yeah, I run, I run the lamp stack, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, like. Kind of your, your your operating system, your computational engine, your your data storage in MySQL, and your, your language in PHP, and then the user connected to this the greatest browser of all. <laughs> and but on like on top of all that, like the user ultimately needed DNS. Like before DNS existed, it was pretty. We won't, we won't get into that. Like ARPANET. It's a little crazy. And this has changed slightly for Web2, where we have like the meme stack, and, and but we still have DNS, and things are constantly changing it in this space. What is Web, what's the Web3 stack? Uh, 
So EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine, they, they certainly don't have a monopoly on Web3, but like they're, they're pretty top of the game right now. Um, that's that's your like OS and computation. Like that runs the, the logic, the business logic that's written in Solidity. And you, your data storage is either Swarm or IPFS if you want to get really centralized. Think of Swarm and IPFS as like BitTorrent. You're not downloading it anything from like a central server. You're, you're downloading stuff peer to peer. So you, you could you could go to a pure distributed peer to peer website. And you could type in, you know, maybe you use Mist browser, which is done by the Ethereum Foundation, or MetaMask, which is a Chrome extension that allows you to connect to the Web3. And now that we have ENS, we don't have to copy paste this ridiculously long uh, hexadecimal number. We can just type uh, Ethereum, Ethereum Foundation and get like a completely decentralized website, which is like, this is so obvious why that's awesome, but hopefully in further meetups we can, or maybe talks afterwards, we can all get really excited about Web3. Uh, another interesting problem that, that this, I think, is solved, I could be wrong, but there's this thing called Zuko's Triangle, and who, who here is familiar with Zuko Wilcox? He's the creator of Zcash. Yeah, you guys probably know. Cool stuff. So he's been in this space for a very long time. He's an old cypherpunk, and he's not old. He's, he's young and quite fit. But um, <laughs> he wrote this article in 2001 called "Names: Distributed, Secure, Human Readable." Choose two. This was like you know over 15 years ago. So DNS is human meaningful. It's very easy for humans to read. Um, it's decentralized more or less, but it's not secure. So the response to that is DNS set, um, which is human, human meaningful and secure, but not nearly as decentralized. Uh, well now we have all three, I think, DNS, which is kind of cool. Like, ha, Zuko. <laughs> yeah, what is, what's the significance of that? I don't know, I thought it was just cool. There is a prophecy, they say, that it, all of the Triangle, the triangle of Zuko is fulfilled. We get this is just an artist's imagination of what that could be. Here we see Zuko standing with his camel. Now, coincidentally, the, the day that the the uh, ENS Solidity code was deployed on on the test network, this magnificent thing was unveiled, and the masses decided to congregate there. I don't know if there's any significance to that. Horrendous. Um, so how, how do you get your own name? <laughs> well, go to this website, uh, 104.27.1, sorry, go to ens.domains. You can also do it through my wallet, but you, you have to bid. Um, as long as the name is available, there's a little bit of a time delay on the number of names, but for the most part, they, the, the name that you want is most likely available. Um, and you put in a minimum of 0.01 ETH, and it's in a what, what's called a Vic, Vicray or Vicray style auction where you, you can imagine you're just like taking your bid and your name and you're sealing it in an envelope and sticking it in a smart contract and no, no one can see it. And then after three days, you all, whoever bid it has to reveal. And the reveal period lasts two days. And if you don't reveal, Boots. So it's only the people who are revealed that the highest bidder and, and whoever has revealed their bids wins. And they pay the amount that the second highest bidder bid. It's a little, it's a little like wacky, but it's actually it's interesting in incentivization. Invented by some French guy two centuries ago. Or something. Uh, and then what, once you win, or if you win, you, you set it up and you point it to what's called a resolver contract, and the ENS guys give you like a, a default public resolver, but you can make your own if you're savvy enough. But what the default gives you is the ability to tie the name to an Ethereum address, so in, in Ethereum Denver's case, just like a wallet that, that uh, uh, not Sasha, um, but Kent and I control, we don't trust Sasha. Um, and 
Also, a swarm or IPFS hash. So you can think of this as like the, the content of your website, your decentralized website. So just like a blob of HTML with JavaScript might live in there. You can browse the web with decentralized hash. Uh, you can create your own custom resolver and, and tie it to a number of things, like maybe a Bitcoin address, or maybe your dog's name, or, or whatever random words that you want. You can also get a subdomain, which I think will be quite popular. Like, this is the first use case I see. Uh, you, you could imagine, like, alex.coinbase.e or Coinbase. You know, Coinbase will give you the ability to get your own subdomain. So it will be much easier to uh, send money in and units or whatever else you can prefer. And that's it. Are there any questions? Oh, uh, I'll let you, you can clap. <laughs>